One thing that I mastered early on was the art of reinvention. If you followed me for a while, you know that throughout my lifetime, I have had several different lives, each one up-leveled, every single one. And today I want to talk to you about how you can not just up-level your life, but up-level your life and become a completely different person within the year. All right, so this may seem like a bit of a departure from my normal content, but it's really not. We are, in essence, creating, manifesting, shifting to a realm where we are a completely different person, an up-level person, a more refined person. If this is not anything that you're interested in, you probably want to click away because we are talking about the art of reinvention and the art of, of up-leveling today. For those who do not know who I am, I am Dr. Stephanie, a neurometaphysicist, and I help you take the science and the spiritual and blend them together to live the best life possible. And today I'm taking that plus my own life's experience on reinventing and sharing them with you. Now, again, I don't have this conversation often publicly, but I personally believe we should always be working towards being a better version of ourselves, becoming more refined, shifting classes if necessary. Again, we don't even talk about class often. And that is absolutely about changing who you are, how you move in the world. And when you do that, you're seen differently. Plus you get different and better opportunities in life. So if you're ready, get out your pen, paper, notebook, note-taking device, and let's jump into it. Number one, this is my number one for everything, and it is decide what you want, but I'm going to take this a little farther here and say, decide who you want to be. Now, I, I want to pause here because something that I see happen often with a lot of my clients is when we get into this conversation about what we want, they always will put a little asterisk and say, I mean, I'm happy with who I am, so I don't really want to change. And so if that even ran through your mind, I want to tell you, you can be happy with who you are while wanting to change. And if you don't have the things you desire in life, you aren't getting the experiences you desire, it's fine to be happy with who you are, but you are living in denial to say you don't want to change and don't want to be different because you would have the things you desire if that's the case, right? So you do. And so I want to give you permission to say, I love me as I am. And also there is better, more next level that is available for me. So I want to give you that permission so you can give yourself permission to say, you know what? I want a different life. And I recognize to have something different. I have to do something different and I have to be someone different. And that's the part people don't tell you. You have to be someone different in order to get something different. You have to be the version of you that already has the thing that you desire. So the first step is for you to decide exactly what you want and who you want to be. Now, this step is really important for the rest of the steps because based upon the answer to that, it will shift what the next steps begin to look like for you. So I will tell you that the examples I am going to give you is going to align for the person who wants to up level in who they are. They want to up level their experiences. They want to up level their career. They want to up level their career opportunities. They want to up level their networking. They want to up level their relationships, romantic and platonic. They want to up level their environment. The word is up level. 
Okay. So if that's you, you will likely be able to follow the exact examples that I am going to give. If what you want is something different, you're going to have to take these examples and make them fit for what it is that you want. Okay. Are you ready? All right. So you're going to decide what you want. And the first step in shifting, or not the first step, because there's not like a one, two, three, do it in this order, but these are all things that you need to focus on. You need to shift your vocabulary. You need to shift your vocabulary. Now, this is not one that's popular with a lot of people, especially in the rise of the conversation of companies and people should be okay with the way that you talk. And I do um, agree that how you speak is how you speak. But if you are not using your words correctly, if you are not pronunciating, it really does not matter how you feel people should think about you. You're automatically seen as a person who are not as educated. Not that it's true, but you're seen that way because if you're educated, you would know how to say the word. You would know how to say these things, right? You're automatically seen in a certain way. Now, again, if you're a person who's like, well, how other people see me isn't my problem. I don't have to change. Again, this isn't for you. I don't believe that, right? We don't shift our circumstances in life by choosing to hold on to who we are and how we've been doing things with all of our might. That is not how you're going to get changed. So this probably isn't for you if that is you. But if you're the person who's like, no, I want to see something different and I want different things in life, you have to be willing to not just shift your vocabulary, but also add on to vocabulary. So I'm a words girl. I love, love, love words. As a matter of fact, I have an app on my phone that will send words of the day. And then I'm also subscribed via email. A girlfriend of mine, we always laugh when we find like words that we don't know. And we will text each other and say, hey, let me give you a new word. And we get a kick out of that, right? It may be a little nerdy, but I'm a words person. So I love finding new words, figuring out how to make them work in my everyday conversation. It's very cool to me. And I love just learning new words. But you want to get to a point that you are not just learning new words, but also practicing how you speak, practicing pronunciation, practicing the correct way a tonality of certain words in certain circumstances. That is really important. So, oh, and also knowing time and place. So clearly I know how to speak well. I know how to speak depending on when I'm in certain situations. And then if I'm with my friends or I'm doing a more casual video or you'll notice my tone will change. You will notice the way in which I speak change. It's really important for you to understand that time and place is a thing. Everything is not appropriate for every situation. And I believe that's what a lot of people miss when they're having the conversation of, I don't want to change how I speak. You don't have to. There are rooms you will never be invited to. There are rooms you will never get in. So you just really have to understand that. As Southern as I am, and I very clearly have a Southern accent, I had even more of an accent once upon a time. When I was in my early 20s, I moved to Los Angeles. And while in Los Angeles, I took voice dictation classes. And I worked to have a more standard American English accent. And so the more I'm in the South, the more my Southern accent comes back. Even when I lived in the West, when I was in the South more, it would come. Or when I'm talking to family members, it will come more. Or just when I'm relaxed into a situation, which would be why, depending on where I am or what we're talking about, sometimes you'll hear my Southern accent a lot more than other times right? Time and place. So that's really important for you to understand. Some examples I want to give you though, other than an app on your phone or email to change or to add to your vocabulary is 
watching what you choose to take in via audio or whatever you're watching on TV. If you are looking to shift the way in which you speak, be very mindful of what you're listening to and what you're watching. Even here on YouTube, language matters. Something else that you can do, and I learned this as I have been learning French for the past few years, it is mimicking. So when you find someone who has an accent or voice is more of what you would like to adopt, start practicing and mimicking that. So in French, it would literally be for me to find someone who has a French accent that I personally like or would like to have. Because if not, the French that I would speak would forever have an American accent to it. So that's what I would do. Mimicking also works when you want to change the way in which you speak. It's mimicking. And I am even doing that. I'm, I'm pretty much doing it all the time when I'm in level up mode, All right, It's finding or when I hear something and I like the tonality of it. I'll repeat it. I will mimic it in order to practice. You have to practice the way in which you speak consistently. And again, it's really easy to fall into what's normal for you if you're not making an effort to practice every day, all day, whenever you speak. So any opportunity you have to speak is an opportunity for you to practice your speech. Any opportunity you have to listen to something or watch something is an opportunity to practice speech or even add to your vocabulary. So the way in which you speak is really important. And I would say it's one of the more important things if you're interested in leveling up the next. It is to become more cultured. Now, this may mean different things to different people. And again, depending on what your main goal is, the goal here for this is about leveling up, manifesting your next level. So being cultured will mean one thing here. It may mean something else depending on what your ultimate goal is. So when I say become more cultured, it's being able to be in any room. I won't say any room. Some of these rooms you probably can already communicate well in. Being able to be in a up-leveled, next level, or level several levels outside of yours, a different class being able to carry on a conversation. What this means is you may need to have conversations about art, about music. You may want to be able to have conversations about finance. It's important to be able to have conversations about different things. And so I suggest things like joining your local art museum. Now, I am here in Atlanta, Georgia. And so High Museum of Art is the main art museum here. When I lived in Las Vegas, I was a member of the art museum there. When I lived in Birmingham, I was a member of the art museum there. When I was in Rome, I was a member of several art museums there because just imagine how many art mu museums are in Rome, right? So you want to join different things like that. Here, it's Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. And so when you join these different cultured things. When you join the museum, you not only have access to enter for whatever the level is that you joined, but also there are events that go along with that. So along with my membership with High Museum of Art, I also get access to events two and three times a month, social events. Now think about it. Who Who's going to these social events at the museum? Who's going to these social events that's introducing a new exhibition? If we're talking about up-leveling, that is a room you would want to be in, network in, rub shoulders in. 
And so there are a lot of benefits of joining whatever your major art museum is in your city or whatever the, the nearest major city is for you. So it's really important that you find these things. When I joined the High Museum of Art, it gave me a discount on joining the symphony. And so I joined that. And now I get tickets to go to the symphony and live events. And when guest conductors are coming in or guest musicians, I'm able to go to exclusive events. That's just for members of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. Does this, this make sense for you? You can do the same thing with the botanical gardens. And I want you to pause and think about a lot of the people who are members of these organizations have been huge benefactors for the museum for many years. I'm thinking specifically, and I won't say their name, but one of the members of the art museum here, every single year they donate at least $100 million to the art museum. So if you are in business and you are wanting to be in an environment where potential investors are, if you are just a woman or a person who wants friends in a different space or even partnerships, romantic relationships, these are the rooms you want to get in. I hear a lot of the conversations happening where people will say these women who want to date a specific type of man, what they don't understand is these people are around different people in their class. And while that is true, what is more true is people are around people who share interest. People are around other people who share interest. Okay. So I don't say it often here, but I am a more conservative politically woman. Well, in life and politically, I am conservative. And so one of the events I go to at least once a year is a conservative women's brunch. I'm in the room with other people with the same interest that I have. This is for anyone. Whether you, whatever level you're on, you tend to be around people with similar interests. So if you're looking to shift people you're around, you may need to shift your interest. You may need to learn more about art. And this is a great opportunity when you join to learn more because you're invited to the newest exhibitions. Once or twice a month, there's likely tours where the curator is walking members around and explaining the different art pieces. This is an opportunity for you to learn about something that maybe you don't know about and you may find yourself being more interested. So being willing to join organizations and shifting your surroundings and shifting um, or becoming more cultured, getting more interested in culture things is going to be a game changer for you if you are looking to get to the next level and level up, okay? And I recognize most of, a lot of what I'm going to say is going to be different than a lot of the conversation around leveling up. Most people having the conversation of leveling up, they are literally only talking to you about meeting new, like meeting men. When I talk about leveling up, I am literally talking about you being a different person in a year, literally, from what you're interested in to the things that, the opportunities that are being presented to you, to your surroundings and friendships and all of that, the way your brain works will completely shift, okay? Next is shift your surroundings, and this can include a lot. But shifting your surroundings isn't just where you live. I remember the first time I heard this piece of advice that if you want to get to a point where you're living in a more expensive neighborhood, get to the neighborhood no matter how you get there. So it took me a minute to really understand what was being said. But in the very beginning, if you can't quote unquote afford to move to the neighborhood, spend your days in the neighborhood. 
find quaint little coffee shops in the neighborhood and go to the neighborhood, grocery shop in the neighborhood, shop in the neighborhood, find things to do in the area in which you want to move and start frequenting the neighborhood, start frequenting the city, the area. When you start frequenting it, going to different events in the area, you start meeting people. You start getting friends there. And before you, you know it, you're going to look up and the opportunity to move and live in that area will just fall in your lap. So I was reading a story once this woman talked about really wanting to be in this affluent area. And she started out doing just that, going to different things in the neighborhood. And then she was able to, she did move from a bigger home, home to something smaller, to um like a garage apartment, someone's garage apartment. She rented that from them just to get in the neighborhood. From there, she was able to go to a bigger apartment. And then from there to, well, from there, she met an oil tycoon and the rest was kind of history there for her, okay? So literally do what's necessary to put yourself in the affluent up-leveled area, all right? Think about your friends, a conversation I have often about shifting who we are is if your friends are not on board, if your friends want to remain where they are, it's selfish to try to change other people. You are only responsible for you and your friends aren't wrong and neither are you. You're just choosing completely different things. And a lot of times people choose to remain where they are because they are afraid to let go of what they know. So you have to be willing often to let go of friends and connections. It's going to hold you back to your past life or to the current life that you're living that you want to walk away from. You have to be willing to disconnect. You have to be willing to distance yourself because people will knowingly or unknowingly sabotage and plant seeds that you can't or this is ridiculous or tell you why you should. And that's not what you need. You need to be around people who are aligned with the vision that you have. Ultimately, what that was at number one that I told you to decide what you want, you need to align with people who align with that. So if you're looking to shift your level, you want to up level, you want to shift your class, you need to be willing to let go of what's holding you back and holding you to anchoring you to where you've been and something is anchoring you. And that is your comfortability. The friends, the associates, and then in the job, this is the next one. You may want to change positions. You may want to get a different job in a different area around people you desire to be around. You may want to increase your education. You may want to get more certifications. You may need to do those things. One of my clients who is a coach, you guys know when I work privately with people, it's entrepreneurs. She's a coach and she pretty much worked from home. So first she moved into a co-working space and she realized that that really wasn't the change she was looking for. And so she moved her office back home and she started volunteering at a local art gallery. By volunteering at a local art gallery, she met, well, first she learned more about art, which handled the get culture part, but then she was able to meet people who would come in and can afford these specific pieces that they would sell, which was several thousands of dollars. She was able to meet artists who would come in and launch their exhibition. She was able to become a part of different auction houses and that helped get her into rooms that she would never be invited to otherwise. So you may want to be creative with that. I thought it was very smart of her to go to an art gallery to get around a different tax bracket, but it worked wonderfully for her, okay? Next. It's making 
a very conscious decision to choose the best of everything for yourself. And I have been making money now for many, 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 many years, like up levels money. But I haven't always, I, there were certain spaces I would, but not always other spaces. So it's a running joke amongst my friends that I am not a fast fashion girly. I would rather have less clothes, but higher quality clothes. Last year, I made a very conscious decision to only buy clothes that are natural fibers, cotton, wool, silk, linen, made a very conscious decision to do that for a bunch of reasons, a bunch of reasons from better than uh, for the environment to the way fast fashion produces and manufactures its clothes. And also you can look at these clothes and tell they're cheap. They're cheaply done. You can look and tell. And so it got to a point after I made that decision and I started consciously choosing instead of being able to buy three outfits, I'm just going to get this or four, I'm going to get this one and it's really good. And it was just consciously choosing to get the best that I could get in that moment, whatever that is, choosing the best that I could get and not deciding, oh, well, I get more for my money here. Because often that includes getting a lesser quality. So one of the things I'll talk to one of my friends about who is a stylist and she's amazing is I love silk skirts. And usually when you're looking for that silk skirt, what's available in stores tends to be more like polyester or satin. Satin tends to be it for most stores. And it's usually like, one layer. And I had several satin skirts that I thought was super cute. And I had an event last year that I was going to. Well, it was my event. And what I was supposed to wear was one of these satin skirts. And I woke up that day and I put it on and it just felt cheap on me. I didn't like it. I was looking at the stitching and I worn the squirt skirt before. It was cute. It didn't feel good on me. And so I ended up wearing something else to that event. And when I came home, I got online, I found another website and I found a pricier skirt, but it was actually made with silk. And when it got here, it was aligned and it was thick and it was still lightweight, but you could tell it was like a thicker, heavier quality. And I held it next to the other cheaper Fashion Nova skirt. And you could easily tell the difference easily with a glance so once you learn to tell the difference you learn to tell the difference about two weeks ago I'm on YouTube it's this um or was I on Instagram I was in something and it was a video of like which outfit is more expensive and it was interesting because I instantly could spot it and the way I could spot it wasn't the handbag it wasn't hair it wasn't make it was none of that it was the skirt and they happen to have on the similar, the little flowy skirt. And one looked thinner than the other. And you just had to have the eye for it. So I watched how everyone else responded. And they were responding to like, oh, the handbag looks like Bottega. And I'm like, I don't know what it is. What I'm telling you is that is a cheap skirt. Lo and behold, it was the outfit that I said. And the skirt was the giveaway for me. And I sent it to my friend who was the stylist. And she said the skirt was the giveaway. She was like, oh, this is easy. It's this one. Because the skirt on the other one looks cheap. What happens when you start choosing the best you can is that you shift your standards for yourself in everything. Not just your clothes, not just your appearance, but in what you will accept from other people as well. In your job, in your friendships, in your relationships, what you stand for shifts. You start choosing the highest quality of 
everything because it literally starts to change how your brain is functioning and how you're thinking about yourself. So it starts small. You may think like this girl is talking about a skirt, but it's not. I'm talking about everything. It's choosing the best that is available to you at this time. See, we have one, two more, and we will be done. Little side note, if you have not jumped in Instant Manifestation, it is an amazing three modules. Well, actually, it's a five module, but three part course that is about instantly manifesting the life that you love. And I am going to put the link down in the description box. Okay. All right. Next. Two more guys. To next. Really consciously choose to start studying etiquette. Yes. Etiquette. You may not be at a space in your life where you're able to quote unquote afford actual finishing school or an actual etiquette course. They are investments, but you can start studying YouTube and the etiquette teachers on YouTube. A lot of the really well-known etiquette schools in the United States, their teachers and instructors have YouTube channels. You can start there and really start understanding fine dining. Where does the fork go? The knife, well, both forks, the knives, difference between a dessert fork or dessert spoon and a soup spoon. Where does the napkin go when you're done, when you're still eating? Where does your fork and your knife go? Which, how many times have you sat at a fine dining restaurant and maybe you said, which glass is mine? If you study etiquette and fine dining, you know exactly which one is yours, no matter how close the, the settings are. So really get to a space where you start studying etiquette, even if you have to start studying on YouTube for free. Get familiar with etiquette, fine dining. How do you network? The easiest ways to remember names, which is one that I really struggle with. I'm an ADHD or so, of course, Names are very difficult for me, but really learning these specific things. What's the proper way to hold a wine glass? Even when I'm watching television, I can spot when people are holding a wine glass incorrectly. There is a right and wrong way to hold a wine glass. There is a right and wrong way to hold a shampoo, champagne flute. There is a right and wrong way to do these things. And you may think that they do not matter, but people who were born and raised knowing these things can spot when you're a poser by these very simple things. So really dig into etiquette and it will look different whether we are talking about etiquette here in the United States or etiquette in Europe. It is different. All right, so knowing that continental um, etiquette looks different is really important. And I would start for where you are, all right? So I wanna say it was 2014, I was invited to a luncheon at Kensington Palace. So I did a really quick class because I wasn't familiar with that level of etiquette in England, in London, okay? So really, really important for you to recognize that it's a little bit different, but start where you are and what is more likely that you will have situations for first, all right? And last, but certainly not least, it's been this year dedicated only to books that are self-help or mindset books. So finance books, books that will help you with your money, books about etiquette, books about mindset, how to think, how to speak, YouTube channels about same thing. So think of your YouTube experience, experiences the exact same way you would think of your books. If it's not something to help you grow, do not waste your time on it, right? And some of the books, if you follow me for a while, you've heard them. The Game of Life and How to Play It, a Love by Florence Scovel Shin. It was the very first self-help book that I really poured myself into. The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, another one that I would pour myself into. Emily Post, anything about Emily Post will be 
really good for etiquette if you're going to get a book, right? Some of it is outdated because we just don't do those things anymore, but find the things that are not outdated in them. Like, I can't even think of anything off the top of my head, but certain things, like think about the time of Emily Post. There wasn't online, there wasn't online dating, right? So certain things will will shift, but th that's just a really good core foundational place to start money books start reading going on wall street journal online and reading the wall street journal every day just to get used to seeing what it's like to follow money and economics right these are i, I lost count of how many it is but these are just a few things that you can do right now and start committing to those things every single day and i am going to promise you and i don't promise anything I am going to promise you that one year from today, your life is going to be different. Your circumstances financially will be different. Your friendship circle will be different. The opportunities that come to you will be different. You will have up-leveled in a way that you never thought possible. You will be invited into rooms that you never even, not that you didn't know you could be invited to, but rooms that you did not even know existed just from those things that I gave you today. I'd love to hear from you. Any thoughts that you may have about the things that I recommended today, be sure to put them down in the comment section and I'll talk to you guys next time. Toodles.